Hello everyone. Welcome back to the new video of the pharmacovigilance series. In the previous video, we have discussed the definition of pharmacovigilance in detail. Today we will discuss what does report means in pharmacovigilance. What are the sources and types of reports in pharmacovigilance? So let's start. We will start with what is report? Report in pharmacovigilance is nothing but the adverse event report. To understand this we will take one example. Let's consider an example. Person X, who took drug X, manufactured by company X, and experienced adverse event, headache. In this case you can raise this concern of drug X causing headache with manufacturer of drug X pharma company. To do that, you need to check the label of drug, on which you will get, a toll-free phone number, of the manufacturer pharma company. If it's not provided on label, you can visit the website of that particular pharma company. Once you get phone number, you can simply dial in and report the above scenario to the manufacturer pharma company. While reporting any report please keep in mind your report should contain minimum 4 parameters, which is also called as 4 minimum criteria of reporting. First parameter is identifiable patient, which includes at least patient's name or date of birth or gender of the patient or age. Second is identifiable reporter, which includes reporter's name who is reporting the scenario. Reporter can be the patient himself or any family member of the patient or any other person. Third parameter is adverse event. Please make sure you should provide adverse event experience by patient due to use of drug. And, fourth parameter is suspect drug. Here you need to provide name of drug which you think be the reason for whichever event you are reporting. Now question may arise, why it is necessary to report minimum four criteria? Answer is, if your report contains all this four parameter, then this report is treated as valid report. And, if you miss to report any of this above mentioned criteria or parameter your report will be treated as invalid report. So this is what we call, report in pharmacovigilance. Once you report to the manufacturer pharma company with all four criteria, it's mandatory for the company to submit this report to the regulatory authority. So now let's discuss what are the sources of reports. In pharmacovigilance, generally we receive reports, from solicited sources, and unsolicited sources. We'll discuss this one by one. First we will discuss, solicited sources of report. It's a reports which regulatory authority ask for which means it's mandatory to submit this report. For example, clinical trial reports and compassionate use program report. So in this scenario, it's mandatory for the pharma company who is conducting these trials to report adverse event report of all participants in the trials to regulatory authority. We will discuss what is clinical trial and compassionate use trials in coming videos. Next source of report is unsolicited reports. It's a reports which regulatory authority not ask for which means it's not mandatory to submit. However, if anyone, voluntarily, report, adverse event report, to pharma company, it is now mandatory for pharma company to report this to regulatory authority. Examples of unsolicited reports includes, any reports which received from, a phone call, through an email, from any social media, or through fax, etc. So now question may arise, who can report, adverse event report, associated with any drug to pharma company? So the answer is, Anyone can report, adverse event report, of any drug to the pharma company who is responsible for manufacturing that drug. Irrespective of qualification, age, gender, etc. This reports can be further classified as, medically confirmed report, and, medically not confirmed report. So first we will see what is, medically confirmed reports. It's any reports received from a, healthcare professionals. Healthcare professionals includes, doctor, pharmacist, nurse, dentist, and a coroner. So many of you might not know who coroner is. Coroner is nothing but the medical examiner. It's a person who is lawyer by profession, or in some cases, this person is doctor, as well as lawyer. Coroner is responsible to investigate cause of death in special cases, like suicide case, work accident, death in police custody, any suspicious death, etc. Now we move to medically not confirmed reports. It's any report which received from other healthcare professionals, so reporter for this type of report can be other than the healthcare professionals. Basically, reporter for such of reports is not from the medical background. So that's it for today. If you found this information helpful, please do share with your friends. Like the video. And subscribe to the channel. Please provide your inputs in comments section. Thank you.